Hello and welcome, my name is William and in today's video we're going to look at some simple tree algorithms. This video is aimed at all you beginners just starting out who are still learning how to write code and especially learning to write recursive code. We're going to have a look at two problems and these are the types of problems which you might encounter as a warm-up question during a job interview. All right, let's get started with our first problem. For this problem, we need to find the sum of all the leaf node values in a tree. For instance, given this tree, we want to sum up the values of all the bottom nodes. That would be these nodes in red for a total of nine. Now, if you're really keen, you can pause the video and give this problem a try. To solve this problem, all we need to do is perform a tree traversal and sum up the values of the leaf nodes as we encounter them during the traversal. Two popular traversal algorithms are doing a breadth first search and a depth first search. Now on trees, the preferred traversal method is typically a depth first search because it lends itself to be easily implemented recursively. So that's what we're going to do. It's pretty simple. Watch how the algorithm does it. What you do is you start at the root and then you plunge down the tree depth first. At the end, we sum up all the values and we can see that the sum of the leaf nodes is nine. Now let's look at some pseudocode for how this is implemented. The algorithm is quite short, but it may look strange at first if you haven't seen much recursive code. We call the leaf sum function by passing in a reference to the root node as a starting point. Inside the leaf sum function, the first thing we do is handle the special case where we're given an empty tree. And if this is the situation, then we return zero. Next, we check if the current node is a leaf node. And if it is, then we return the value stored in the leaf node. The isLeaf method checks if a node is a leaf node by counting all its children. If the number of child nodes is zero, then we know that the current node is indeed a leaf node. If the node is not a leaf node, then we iterate over all its children and call the leaf sum method recursively, summing over the return values. This ensures that we traverse the entire tree and properly accumulate values. Finally, once we have finished computing the sum for this node and its subtree, return the total. And that's all for summing up the leaf node values in a tree. Our second problem today is a classic problem in computer science, which is to find the height of a binary tree. The height of a tree is defined as the number of edges from the root node to the lowest leaf of the tree. Here, the leftmost tree has a height of zero because it has no edges. The middle tree has a height of one, and the rightmost tree has a height of three because the longest path from the root to the lowest leaf is three. To solve this problem, we're going to break it down and define a new function called h of x, which returns the height of the subtree rooted at node x. This new function allows us to start thinking not only about the height of a tree as a whole, but also the height of the subtrees within our tree, which are going to help us find the overall height. For example, on this slide, h of a has a value of three, but h of b has a value of two, and h of e has a value of zero. By themselves, leaf nodes, such as node e, don't have children, so they don't add any additional height to the tree. So we conclude that as a base case, the height of any leaf node should be zero. Now, assuming node x is not a leaf node, we're able to formulate a recurrence relation for the height, which is that the height of a subtree rooted at node x 
is the maximum of the height of x's left and right subtrees plus 1. Let's have a closer look at how this works with an example. Suppose we have a tree and we want to compute its height. So we start at the root and then we recursively traverse down the tree depth first. When we encounter a leaf node, we give it a height of zero and return. We can't compute the height of a node until we know the height of all its children. So we visit the right node. The right node is also a leaf node, so it gets a height of zero. On the callback, we have visited both children of the current node, so we take the maximum heights of the left and the right children and add one for a total of one. We just finished exploring the right half of the tree, now let's finish the left side. It doesn't matter which side you do first, as long as you explore the whole tree while you do your depth first search. We have found another leaf node, so it gets a height of zero. We found another leaf node, and another leaf node. On the callback, take the max and add one. Take the max and add one again. Finally, compute the height of the final node by taking the max and adding one. And there you have it, how to find the height of a tree. Let's have a look at some pseudocode, shall we? This is the tree height function. It is responsible for computing the height of the tree. You would start by calling this function by passing in the tree's root node as we did for the leaf sum function. The first thing we do is handle the empty tree case. The height of an empty tree is undefined, so return minus one. Next, we check whether the current node is a leaf node by checking if both its left and right child nodes are null and return zero. If either of them are not null, then we know that this node has more children and we need to keep digging further down the tree. In the event we haven't found a leaf node, return the maximum height of the left subtree and the right subtree plus one. I want to take a moment and go back to the previous statement and remark on a simplification we can exploit. What do you reckon happens if we remove checking whether a node is a leaf node or not? Do you think the algorithm will still behave correctly? Pause the video and think this over. Oddly enough, removing the leaf node check still makes the algorithm work correctly. This works because the base case has adopted a new meaning. Instead of the base case checking for leaf nodes, it's now checking whether a node is null and returning minus one. Now, returning minus one is not only for handling the empty tree case, but also to help in correcting for the right tree height. Let's see what I mean by correcting for the right height. If our new base case is now checking for null nodes instead of leaf nodes, then our tree is one unit taller, so we need to correct for that. For the sake of being thorough, let's see how the height is calculated with this new base case. Once we reach a null node, return minus one. On the recursive callback, remember that we always add plus one with our recurrence. So when we add up the counts, you see that we get the correct height of three. And that's how you compute the height of a tree. In practice, if you're designing a data structure where the tree height is important, you can dynamically keep track of the height as you create the tree and insert nodes instead of fully computing the height every time like we're doing here. But of course, that isn't always doable. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you learned something, and I will catch you next time.